Chapter 4, Social, Cultural, and Religious Influences on Child Health Promotion. Okay, culture, this is the definition our textbook uses. It's a pattern of assumptions, beliefs, and practices that unconsciously frame or guide the outlook and decisions of a group of people. Culture does differ from race and ethnicity, uh, race and ethnicity being more biologic, race being absolutely biologic, ethnicity usually uh, includes a little bit of self um, association with a group, but still you're talking more about biologic things. So social roles, this is part of culture. Uh, culture has prescribed patterns of behavior for persons in a variety of social positions. So, you know, perhaps the father is the leader of the family, perhaps this is a matriarchal family, the mother's the leader. Second point, social groups consist of a system of roles carried out in primary and secondary groups. So our family is our primary group, but when you put them in a different setting, they may have different roles um, in groups that are kind of the larger groups, not just the, the family. Subcultural influences. There are subcultures within a culture and things that can contribute to making subcultures are ethnicity, social class and occupation, poverty or homelessness, migrant families, immigrant children, religion, schools and communities that you belong to, and then peer cultures. By culture, some children are exposed to two or more cultures. By culture really means they're comfortable in both. Usually that's the family is from a different culture and the parents are much more comfortable in their home culture where the kids have been raised here and they're equally comfortable in either culture. Cultural and religious influences on health care, um, this susceptibility to certain health problems. We know that there are certain ethnic groups have higher incidence of certain illnesses, so there is a hereditary factor that predisposes children to certain illnesses, um, some of them genetic illnesses, some of our inherited uh, problems, as well as just you know hereditary factors that make them more likely, more at risk for certain illnesses. And then socioeconomic factors. Poor kids uh, get sick more often and they get sicker. Um, customs and folkways, that's our alternative treatments that many families are going to use um, along with or in place of Western medicine. And then food customs, do they have food restrictions or what does their diet usually consist of and is, are they adequately nourished because of that? Are there any uh, essential uh, nutrients that they're lacking in? Here's a picture of some religious customs. Health beliefs and practices. Um, you should remember all of this from your transcultural class. Uh, the health beliefs, some people believe in natural forces. Some believe health is caused by supernatural forces, that there are spiritual forces that cause us to be well or ill, or that everything is in a balance and getting that balance out of balance is what causes illness. Um, so health practices, there are similarities among cultures regarding prevention and treatment of illness and prenatal influences often come from folklore. There's lots and lots of um, you know old wives tales that have to do with children, childbirth, uh, pregnancy, anyway. Okay, importance of culture and religion to nurses. Our book, as well as the BRN and everyone else, says we need nurses to be a little more aware of culture and to develop their cultural competence. And to realize we are part of a nursing culture. We are our own subculture that may be different than your patient's cultures. So we need to be aware of, of that and those potential conflicts. And then 
even outside of that nursing culture, we all come from a culture and have our own cultural and spiritual beliefs and values, and we need to know what we believe so that we don't um, accidentally contradict or, or um, devalue uh, our patient's values without even realizing we've done it. So that the first step is always assessing your own values and beliefs and understanding yourself, that self-reflection. Which is what the conclusion is. Know your own values, your own biases. And then don't judge your patients and their families. They are sick, they're in the hospital. Perhaps there are some things that they could do um, that would be better health-wise for them, but we're pretty limited on how much we can affect them. Right now, let's get their child well and work with them. So if they want to include things that we wouldn't personally include, let's try and do that because our goal is to get their child well and to have them that family-centered care, to have them trust us and be part of the, uh, the decisions of what's going to happen.